Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, we learned about server-side rendering where the HTML is generated at request time. We also learned that SSR is required when you need to fetch data per request. In this video, let's learn how to fetch the data which is needed to pre-render the HTML. For our example, Let's assume that we are building a news website which we discussed in the previous video. As part of this site, we need to display a list of news articles whose data is fetched from an API endpoint. For the API, I'm once again going to make use of JSON server. For a brief intro about JSON server, please do watch the video on incremental static regeneration which I've covered earlier in the series. Now what I've done is inside db.json, apart from the products data which we used for ISR, I've also added an entry called news. News is an array of three articles. Each article has an ID, a title, description and a category. This data is sufficient for our example. In the terminal, let's run yarn serve hyphen json. Head to the browser and navigate to localhost 4000 slash news which is the key for our json and you can see the list of three articles being returned. All right. Now that we have the API up and running, let's create the news list page, which will use SSR form of pre-rendering. In the pages folder, create a new folder called news. Within the folder, create a new file called index.js. Within the file, I'm going to define and default export a simple component. So function news article list and we return an h1 tag which says list of news articles. We also default export the same. If you now run the application, so new terminal, yarn dev, head to the browser and navigate to slash news, we should see our news article list component. What is missing though is the list of articles. And yes, the list needs to be pre-rendered using server-side rendering. Now in Next.js, to use server-side rendering for a page, you need to export an async function called getServerSideProps. When you export that function, it will be called by the server on every request. Inside that function, you can fetch external data and send it as props to the page. Very similar to get static props. Let's understand by implementing the function. So back in VS Code, in our index.js file, we're going to export an async function called get server side props. So export async function get server side props. Within the function, we can make an API request to our JSON server. And for that, we can make use of the fetch API. So const response is equal to await fetch. And we pass in the JSON server URL as the argument. So localhost 4000 slash news. Once we get the response, we convert it into JSON. So const data is equal to await response.json. Now that we have the data, let's return it as props. For our example, I'm going to add one property called articles, which will be set to the data that has been fetched. Now our news article list component will receive props at request time. So we can pass in props as an argument or we could also simply destructure the articles property. Articles here 
refers to the property in the return statement inside get server side props. All right, now that we have a list of articles, rendering the data is simple React code. So curly braces, we're going to map over the list of articles. For each article, we are going to return a div tag where we set key is equal to article.id and an h2 tag where we display article.id, article.title and article.category. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, we should see the list of three news articles being displayed. So what is happening here is that when we navigate to slash news, the Next.js server receives the request. Upon receiving the request, Next.js runs the get server side props function exported from the page. The data is fetched and provided as props to the component. The HTML for the component is generated on the server and then sent back to the browser. So if we inspect the news document in the network tab, you can see that the HTML is already generated and then sent to the browser. So we are able to successfully pre-render the news page. Now one point you have to keep in mind is that this form of pre-rendering is slower compared to static generation as the server must compute the result on every request. Because of this slower performance, use server-side rendering only if absolutely necessary. Now before we wind up this video, I want to quickly highlight a few points about get server-side props. A lot of it will seem familiar since we have already been through get static props, but I want to repeat for completeness. The first point is that get server side props runs only on the server side, which also implies that the function will never run client side. As a matter of fact, the code you write inside get server side props won't even be included in the JS bundle that is sent to the browser. This leads us to our second point. You can write server-side code directly in get server-side props. So code that you would typically see in Node.js, like accessing the file system using the FS module or querying a database can all be done inside get server-side props. And if you were to import, let's say the FS module to read from the file system, the code for FS module will also not be bundled as part of the code sent to the browser. Next.js is pretty smart when it comes to that. You also don't have to worry about including API keys in get server side props as that won't make it to the browser either. The third point is an important one as well. Get server side props function is allowed only in a page and cannot be run from a regular component. It is used only for pre-rendering and not client-side data fetching. The fourth point is that get server side props should return an object and the object should contain a props key, which is again an object. Otherwise, Next.js will throw an error. The exception, of course, is when you return not found. The fifth and final point is that get static props will run at request time. All right, I hope you now have an idea of how to achieve server-side rendering in Next.js. Export the async function get server-side props, return a props object and make use of the props in the component. In the next video, let's learn how to server-side render with dynamic parameters. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.